Data Insights from Precise Asymptotics by Takashi Takahashi from Tokyo. Please, the floor is yours and welcome. Okay, thank you for the introduction. I'm Takashi Takahashi from the University of Tokyo. Uh, as, as already introduced, I today I'd like to talk about a mean field analysis of ensemble learning. Okay, let me start. Uh, this is a train. Uh, first, I've described uh, some backgrounds and motivations for this talk. And then I will introduce uh, Epic, uh, a framework for analyzing the bugging by using the uh, Epic method of statistical learning, method, say physics. After that, I will talk about sparse regression and imbalanced data as application. Uh, I should put um, um, one disclaimer here. I'm, because I'm not a good English listener, so I'm happy if you could speak slowly if, uh, when you're asking questions. <laughs> okay. Okay, let me start with explaining the motivations and settings. Uh, this talk is basically about uh, statistical learning. Uh, we are given a data uh, consisting of pairs of input X and output Y. Uh, usually, uh, these data points are independently generated from some unknown distribution. So the aim is to run a model to, predict on a, to make a good prediction for new input X. Uh, in this talk, uh, we consider the running of linear models. Uh, I mean that the output for the input X is a linear combination of the weight and the fire. So to run the parameters, uh, I'd like to consider bugging, which is a classical method of ensemble learning. In bugging, uh, we consider minimizing this kind of randomized cost function. Uh, this is an empirical risk measured on the resampled data set which is obtained by randomly sampling each data point from the original data set. So the resampled data set D star looks like this. Here, this red color integer, C mu, represents the number of times that data point X mu and Y mu appears in the resampled data set. Uh, there are two popular ways to uh, construct a resampled data set. Uh, one method is a bootstrap which is a very traditional statistical, uh, traditional method of computational statistics. In this case, uh, each data point is obtained by sampling with replacement from data set. So each data set, data point may appear several times like this. Uh, in this case, uh, CMU follows basically uh, independent Poisson distribution with mean mu b. Uh, this parameter uh, specifies the size of the pseudo data set, d star. And the, the other one is uh, the sub, uh, subsampling. In this case, uh, each data point is sampled with without replacement. So the size of the resampled data set is strictly smaller than the original data set. In this case, uh, uh, obviously, uh, CME follows a simple Perinui distribution. In bugging, uh, the final estimator is obtained by taking the average with respect to the resampling variable C. Uh, it is usually used to reduce the variance, so it is often combined with less bias, but with high variance models. For example, uh, decision trees are uh, combined with bugging, so the it will uh, to yield the, the famous random forest algorithm. Uh, what I'd like to know is what happens when used with linear models, uh, which is the most simplest variant of the neural networks. Especially, I'm wondering about the difference between just standard uh, ditch regularization or error and regularization with debugging. Uh, typically, uh, you know, in learning in linear models, uh, we can use other L2 regularization or such kind, or such kind of regularization to reduce the variance. Are these two different? Uh, this is a question I'm basically con uh, recently considering. Actually, there are several uh, research results regarding this question. Uh, this paper, uh, made by Brejun and his co-authors, uh, they considered the ordinary least squares uh, with subsampled examples, uh, subsampling of rows, and uh, they also considered the subsampling of futures, subsampling of columns. What they showed that is that uh, the average of this minimizer, uh, the average of the minimizer of this randomized cost function is equivalent to the ridge estimator with some optimally tuned 
regularization parameter. Uh, similar results were found in other settings. Uh, for example, in the last entry, uh, Zorich and Kroko showed that uh, they only consider the subsampling uh, of few examples, and they showed that uh, the regularization with subsampled examples is equivalent to the digital regularization with other regularization parameters. Uh, similar empirical results were found in other maximum likelihood estimators, but uh, uh, yeah. So this is a short summary of the story so far. Uh, Sampling is very popular and theoretically well motivated. They can reduce the variance of the estimators. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, so, but however, uh, in digitalization or unregularized maximum likelihood estimation, uh, ensembling seems to be very similar to L2 regularization, at least if we focus on the gen generalization performance. Uh, this is interesting uh, because uh, in the sense that we can use, uh, it, it can provide an alternative way to introduce the L2 regularization. But on the other hand, I think it's a bit disappointing because it implies that we do not need to consider, we, we may, may not need to consider ensembling in the context of running linear models. So I'm wondering if we could find any interesting features or uh, some uh, fruitful uh, gain uh, in other more a bit structured settings. For this, uh, in this talk, we consider the bugging in slightly more structured data settings. Uh, I mean, the sparse regularization here, the uh, teacher has some sparse structures, structure, and the other one is a running uh, classifier from label in branch data. In this case, uh, in data has cluster structures, and the number of the samples in each cluster is different. Uh, Ah, okay, okay, thank you, sorry. Uh, I also described uh, the, the Rebecca method for analyzing the, uh, such ensemble running. Uh, this is a basic motivation and background, okay? Okay, okay then let's move on to the Rebecca method for analyzing the value. Uh, this is an optimization problem used in ensemble running of linear models. Here, the estimator that we had for one randomized cost function depends on both C, uh, the sampling sample variable, and also obtained dead set, D. Uh, the goal is to clarify how this estimator depends on C and D separately. Uh, why separately? Uh, because the resampling is bugging is made on a fixed dead set, D, so this Average estimator depends is uh, made by condition on D. Uh, but of course, uh, because the average estimator still depends on D, so we also want to know the dependence of data of this average estimator. So we need to develop some analytical framework for this kind of problem. To describe the replica analysis for bugging, uh, I will first uh, very shortly review the classical replica analysis uh, for the empirical risk minimization. Uh, this is a traditional, very traditional replica analysis for the empirical risk minimization. And here, there is no additional randomness, C. So the goal is just to clarify how it depends on the obtained data set. For using the replica method, we usually introduce a Boltzmann distribution uh, like this. And uh, because this distribution concentrates on the minimizer of the loss function in the zero temperature limit, uh, beta goes to infinite. So the analysis is replaced by the an analysis of this Boltzmann distribution at zero temperature limit. Uh, by evaluating the fluctuation with respect to D uh, of, the, of the estimator, we use a replicated system of this form. Uh, we can replicate the Boltzmann factors in times and multiply it uh, multiply them, and finally take the average over the data set. So this is a, a normal distribution uh, that do not depend on the data. One salient feature of the replicated system is that uh, the fluctuation regarding the obtained data set can be extracted from inter-replica correlations at, if we can 
uh, ex extrapolates the computation result for finite integer n goes to zero. For example, the two-point correlation uh, on the replicated system is the second moment uh, of the estimator, averaged over d, and the higher order commands can be computed similarly. Uh, yeah. So fortunately, for simple data structures, uh, we can obtain a very simplified marginal distribution of this uh, replicated system. Uh, usually, the, the system is independent of the com index of the component of the original estimator. Uh, this is be very mean field like, and the parameters of this marginal distribution can be determined by the replication metric saddle point or the state operation of the ABR algorithms. And in this sim uh, effective single body problem, uh, this, this problem, this minimization problem, uh, expectation uh, uh, with respect to D is appro uh, approximated by simple Gaussian random variable, QZ. So because this sim problem is very simple enough, we can obtain many uh, desired properties uh, by using uh, some numerical integrals or some analytical methods or some blah, blah, blah. So this is a sum summary of the classical uh, replicate analysis. Uh, we first define a Boltzmann distribution and then replicate the system and the average over D. Uh, we hope that the fluctuation with respect to data can be extracted from entire replicate correlations. And then we simplify the replicated system for uh, integer valued N. Uh, in very simple cases, we can uh, achieve such simplification by using the exact computation. But in other cases, we cannot, uh, we need to uh, use approximate inference methods as was done in the early 2000s uh, by Mazan and Opal. I think uh, this, this kind of topic will be treated in the morning. <laughs> and finally, we extra extrapolate uh, n code at zero to obtain simple effective, effective problem. How can we extend this analysis uh, to the bugging? Uh, obviously, the key point is the second step. Because we have, uh, in the classical case, we, uh, there is only one source of random, random variable, the authentic state. But in the case of bugging, uh, there are two kinds of randomness, C and D. One naive way, uh, maybe, to consider this kind of replicated system just replicate the randomized Boltzmann factor and then average over C and also D. But this is not correct. Uh, <laughs> we, we cannot separate the contribution of C and D from this replicated system. Uh, actually, the uh, correct way is to use this kind of replicated system. This is a bit uh, <laughs> complicated, but the idea is very simple. Uh, the fluctuation with respect to C conditioned on D can be obtain, would be obtained by this replicate uh, system. Uh, we just replicate the Boltzmann factors and uh, average over C. From this replicate system, we would be able to uh, extract the fluctuation over C uh, conditioned on D. And, and, but we need to finally obtain the fluctuation over D uh, of the average estimators. So to, further, to obtain such D fluctuation, we should further replicate this average replicate system. Then is uh, this nested replicate system. Actually, we can extract some uh, bootstrap fluctuations from the interact replicate correlations of this nested replicate system. This is an example. And in the first term, only the sec, uh, replica indices in the inside of the replicas are changed. A1 and a, uh, these two red colored replica indices are the same, but the next blue colored replica indices are different. Uh, this is the second moment of the estimator averaged over C and D. And the, in the second term, uh, we change the first replica indices, A1 and B1. And then, we obtain the second moment of the average estimator. Uh, 
So we can obtain the variance with the, of the estimator. Maybe we can uh, uh, visually show this randomized uh, nested box of the uh, replicated system. Inside, the, uh, inside the each public box, uh, uh, the boson factors uh, share the same random variable C1, and then these boson factors are multiplied and averaged over C1, uh, and the other public box are the same. And then we multiply these average the Boltzmann factors, and finally take the average over D. As you can see, uh, this system is very similar to the, uh, this figure is very similar to the three diagram of the one step of deputy symmetry breaking analysis. So we can associate the order parameters for each hierarchy of the this nested replicated system. At first step, uh, uh, two Boltzmann factors are picked from different public box, and then is uh, this kind of uh, order parameters. Uh, this is the average estimator, uh, square of the average estimator, and finally taken the average with respect to data. And in the second layer, uh, we pick two Boltzmann factors from the same public box, and then is this kind of order parameters. And the fun final step is uh, just pick up the Boltzmann factor, same Boltzmann factor twice. So we can depict this kind of order parameter structure in the parismatics, in the form of the, of the parismatics. So order parameter is the second moment of the average estimator and the variance with respect to the uh, resampling and the, uh, the rest one is the fluctuation with respect to the Boltzmann distribution. So the analysis of the nest, this nested replicated system is ex essentially the same with the one SB analysis. But here, the break in two, which corresponds to the breaking uh, parameter in the one SB analysis, is also taken to the zero limit. So this is uh, like a one SB analysis, but very close to the symmetric solution. Yeah? Uh, so, so, so uh, could, could you use a microphone? <laughs> I want to ask, what types of matrix is this? Is it a confusion matrix? Uh, uh, this, is, uh, this matrix just summarizes uh, uh, in a product of the order parameters. Uh, uh, the each component, of, we define this matrix as Q, and then Q, A1, A2, and uh, A1, B2. System. Uh, in the computation of the uh, partition function of the nested replicated system, this kind of, of parameter appears, and uh, I summarize uh, these parameters. So I think uh, this is not the uh, uh, same with the confusion matrix. Okay. So just clarification on the notation. So for the second term is the variance of w, the Gibbs product Wis, but over the Cs, but conditional on the Ds. So the first two terms are fully conditional on the Ds, the things on the inside. Uh, yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what you mean. Right? Average over C is uh, taken by condition on yeah. D. Yeah. And the last one is just over the randomness of both simultaneously. Uh -huh. That's yeah. the notation. Okay, thank you. No question anymore? Okay, wait, proceed. Uh, I have okay. like also one, is it evident that you should have this, uh, this kind of one RSB structure or could you think about other structures that, uh, is it convenient for the computation to take this one RSB structure kind of matrices or, or is there another fundamental reason? Uh, so, so uh, uh, I think I, I couldn't get the point. <laughs> You take this this kind of structure, which are reminiscent from the Parisi approach mm -hmm. for replica symmetry breaking. Mm -hmm. Is it because 
analytically it is convenient or uh, yeah, is there a fundamental reason for taking that structure also for that specific analysis? Uh, it's just because in the, in the case of analytically solvable case, uh, this, using this uh, parametrics is just very convenient. Yes. I, I don't know if there is no further uh, very fundamental reason. So is it expected to be exact, the computation, the, the, the solution obtained from this type of NSATs is expected to be exact? Uh, yeah, or, yeah. Yes? Okay. Okay. Okay, this is a summary of the epic analysis for ensembling. Uh, the first step is exactly the same with the traditional analysis. And the next step, uh, we need to construct a nested replicated system. We first replicate the system in one time and average over C, and then replicate the system in two times and finally take the average over D. Uh, we hope that fluctuation of C and D can be separately extracted by carefully adjusting the replica indices. And then again, uh, simplify the replicated system by exact computation or some approximate inference. Uh, this step uh, can be made by, uh, this step is ba basically very similar to the Morris B like analysis. So if you can uh, compute a replica symmetric solution for one problem, then extending it to the resampling problem is very easy. And finally, uh, we need to take the limit in one and in two goes to zero. Actually, this kind of analysis has been used sev several times. Uh, for example, in st uh, the derivation of the state operation was a replica analysis of the appro ar ar approximate resampling algorithm. Uh, these two papers use the same kind of analysis. And recently, uh, Bruno Rorero and his co-authors co also considered the sim similar kind of formulas uh, for analyzing the random future ensemble. They also derived a uh, proposed rigorous analysis for this kind of problem. Okay. So let's move on to the applications, if there is no more questions. Okay. okay. Then let's move on to the application. The first problem is the sparse regression. Uh, this is a setup for the sparse regression. Uh, we have a pair of, of input and output. And uh, in this talk, I do not assume any structure on the input uh, obtained data set, uh, sorry, input. Uh, I mean, XMU is generated from a spherical Gaussian distribution. But the output Y is generated from a linear teacher with some sparse console co coefficient. Uh, it is fast in the sense that uh, each component of the parameter is generated from gauss bernoulli distribution. Here, rho specifies the sparsity of the parameter. Uh, obvious. Of course, the goal is to run nice predictor for new input x or equivalently to run uh, this sparse coefficient. Uh, since one popular method for estimating such a sparse vector is to use Russell, so uh, let's consider minimizing this kind of those uh, randomized cost function. Uh, this is a combination of the randomized squared error and the L1 regularization. Uh, in this talk, we consider the boost, boot subcase. So C mu follows the Poisson distribution with mu mu b. Uh, because here, uh, C mu is normalized by the mean of the Poisson distribution, it contains a unrandomized case, non-randomized case, case in the limit of uh, large uh, mu b limit. Uh, because in this case, uh, the average is goes to one and the variance goes to zero. So there is no randomization. Uh, we consider a bootstrap edge for, of the predictor uh, for a new input x. Then, the, by using uh, by a very simple, comp simple computation, we obtain the formula for the generalization error. Except that the estimator is replaced with the average estimator, uh, this formula is completely the same with the traditional uh, linear regression problem. Uh, there are two questions that I'd like to address. The first point about the improvement of the generalization error. Uh, of course, the averaging procedure will reduce the variance of the estimator to some extent, but is this, uh, why is this significant? 
or is this difference from the electoral legalization? Uh, this is the first point. And uh, the second. Someone is not muted. <laughs> okay. The second question that that may be uh, a bit more interesting is the, cho the choice of the best hyperparameters. Uh, there are two hyperparameters that we can control. The first one is the size of the <laughs> size of the boot subject set. Uh, if mu is very large, uh, there is also or no randomness, so the bugging is not so efficient. But when UV is very small, then uh, the variety of the uh, estimator for each randomized cost function is very large, so ensembling <coughs> will be very significant. And of course, there is one more parameter, the regularization parameter. I'm interested how this, how does the optimal parameter depends on the data set? I mean the sparsity of the W0 and the size of the data set. Uh, this point, uh, this problem is a bit uh, simple, but I think it's a nice good start, good start point. Okay, uh, as already explained, uh, the, we can obtain a single, simple effective single body problem by using uh, one sb like analysis. Uh, in the end of the day, uh, we can obtain this kind of uh, kind of effective single body problem. But here, the, the local field, H, uh, has two sources, can be, can be written by the superposition of two uh, Gaussian variables. The first one comes from the obtained data set. This is very traditional one. And uh, here we have another one, uh, red colored eta. This uh, Gaussian random variable effectively represents the randomness that comes from the resampling. So the macroscopic quantities that, that appears in the generalization error, uh, this guy and this guy, can be used, uh, can be re replaced by using the solution of this effective single body problem. Here, the average with respect to the resampling can be replaced by the uh, Gaussian random variable eta and the uh, average over the in this empirical average, or the average over the data set can be replaced by the GZ and W0. And here is the result for the performance comparison. Uh, by using the uh, side point, point condition of the uh, minus B analysis, I numerically computed the generalization error for each uh, row and alpha. And I numerically optimized the generalization error. Uh, this figure shows the uh, ratio of the generalization errors uh, with, uh, with the bugging case and with the bugging case. Uh, the, uh, the horizontal line uh, shows the uh, sparsity of the parameter and the vertical line represents the size of the data set normalized by the input dimension. And as you can see, uh, the gen generalization error is significantly reduced when W0 is not so sparse. But when uh, the W0 is very sparse, well, there are sufficiently large number of, of data set, uh, da data points, uh, the improvement is not so significant. So if we only focus on the generation error, then uh, the bugging is very similar to L2 regularization. Uh, this point is more clear if we consider the elastic net case. Uh, which is a combination of the L1 degradation and the L2 degradation. In this case, all, almost no gain was obtained uh, because there is a slight <laughs> gain. So in strict sense, uh, L2 uh, bugging is not, seems not to be the L2 regularization, but almost similar to that. And this is the optimal choice of the hyperparameters, hyperparameter. Uh, but in this case, something interesting is happens. Uh, when W0 is very sparse, or there are sufficiently large number of data points, then the best choice is, uh, here, the optimal parameter is plotted in the log scale. Uh, when the situation is very nice, then the optimal choice is to use a strictly positive and relatively large uh, 
uh, regularization parameter. This is because in, in a good situation, uh, the less the estimator with, with that randomization is already very strong. But when W0 is not so sparse, or the data, data set is not so very large, then the best regularization permit, parameter seems to tend to be infinitesimally small. And what hap what's happening in the purple region? Uh, to, for confirming this point, I also plotted uh, whether the number of the unique data points in each disampled data set is greater than the parameter dimension or not. In the purple region, uh, under the determined situation is achieved in each randomized data set. Uh, the region below the red line is very trivial because the uh, data set is already smaller than the parameter dimension. But what's interesting is the uh, upper right region. In this case, in this region, even though there are very many data points, but the best choice is to use small mu b so that the each, uh, for each randomized data set uh, under the determined situation is achieved. So to summarize, uh, when the parameter is not so sparse, uh, then uh, regularization parameter tends to be infinitesimally small, and the number of unique data points in the sample data set is smaller than the input dimension. So the, it says that the best choice in the you know, not good situation is to use the ensemble of interpolators. Uh, this is a minimization of the L1 norm by keeping the input output relation exactly. So schematically speaking, uh, this, this is a phase function. Uh, if sparse regularization cannot find the sparse structure of W0 sufficiently, then the best choice is to give up to find the best uh, sparse estimator. But instead, maximally, best choice is maximally increase the variety of the estimators, but keeping non-trivial uh, regularization, which is uh, an ensemble of interpolators. Uh, actually, uh, increasing the variety of the weak runners, uh, which is an estimator for each uh, randomized data set, is a very well known strategy of ensemble running. Uh, but I think the appearance of the phase transition in the hyperparameter space is not so trivial. And this is a short summary of the uh, sparse regularization, uh, sparse estimation. Uh, bugging is, is especially useful in when W0 is not so sparse, but this property is just uh, very similar to the ditch regularization. So, and almost users, users in the uh, elastic net case. But uh, what's happening inside is very different from the ditch regularization. Uh, optimal choice of mu v and lambda shows a phase transition. When W0 is very sparse or alpha is large, uh, using uh, bugging is not so efficient, but uh, in other case, uh, the, there is a region that the best choice is to use the ensemble of the interpolators. Uh, also, this problem is very simple, but uh, something non trivial thing appears from the sparsity structure. Uh, this point is very different from just considering the rich, uh, rich estimation. Okay, this is a result for the sparse estimation. If there are no questions, then let's move on to the next application. Uh, running from running cross fire from imbalance data set. Uh, in, this is a setup for the classification problem. Uh, there are two uh, components of the Gaussian peak distribution. The first one is for the positive examples, uh, blue one, and the other one, red colored one, is for negative samples. Uh, the goal is to run crash fire that can generalize well to both positive and, pos and negative samples. We want a higher accuracy rate for input inputs from either classes. Uh, in particular, we focus on the case of imbalance setting. The point is that uh, the intercept of the classification plane, uh, which is depicted by the a practice line is strongly affected by the imbalance. 
in the left case, uh, the number of each cluster is same. So the the same uh, the intercept disk classification plane lies on the close to the origin. But in the right case, uh, uh, positive samples are very small compared to the negative samples. So the uh, intercept of the disk classification plane is strongly biased towards the minority class. So in the limit, uh, the majority overwhelms the uh, minorities, then the best, uh, uh, if we do not uh, take into account of the imbalance, the usually the best uh, classification plane is around there, so we cannot detect positive samples. Uh, there are many methods for uh, treating such imbalance. The first kind of type uh, method is at the data level one. Uh, and among them, downsampling is, I think, this is most familiar, uh, popular way. In this case, uh, we minimize this kind of cost function. Uh, uh, the, the data points in the minority, majority class is downsampled, which is represented by this C nu. Uh, in, the key point is that uh, for, for minority class, the sampling is not used. Because in this randomized uh, data set, uh, the number of the samples in each classes are the same, so the, this estimator should have low bias, but because the number of the total data points used in this randomized cost function is small, so this estimator should have large bias. And there is also another way, uh, there is another way. Uh, which, are a bit, which is a bit computation demanding. Uh, this is uh, usually called underbugging, which is obtained by average over, uh, which is obtained by taking the average of this estimator with respect to C. Uh, this method is usually to use to reduce the variance. Uh, there is also another method, uh, which is at the cost, cost level. Uh, this is a very um, simple, simple one among them, uh, which con only considers weighted cross entropy, uh, which uses a different weight on the each crosses. Usually, in, in minus for a minority cross, uh, majority cross is taken to be very large. Uh, in this case, all data points are simultaneously used, so the computation is very easy, and uh, well, you may be think, the, think of it as a very naive method, but this is very popular and standard, and even implemented in scikit-run. So many methods have been proposed, in, including the ensemble method. Uh, actually, there are too many methods uh, proposed. So the choosing one good method is very difficult. Uh, so what I want to ask is that, uh, do we really need to aggregate, or uh, do we really need to aggregate? Uh, because the aggregation is computationally very expensive, because we need to estimate, obtain the estimator for many realization of the resample data set. Uh, is this, if this bugging procedure is very similar to rich regularization. Well, maybe we can obtain a nice estimator just using one realization of the sample estimator and by choosing the good regularization. And I also want to, oh, to know if the sampling procedure is, is better than the uh, cost-based one or not. Uh, I think when there are many data points in the classical uh, asymptotic regime, uh, the sampling approach and the cost-based approach would not so different, but things in high dimension settings may be very different. So uh, I'd like to consider this kind of proportional limit. Again, we can construct a single body problem for uh, this kind of problem. Uh, in this case, we cannot obtain the generalization error by using a simple L2 uh, mean squared error of the parameters, but we can obtain the ribbon at logit of the output, uh, which is defined by the 
uh, linear combination of the parameters for new uh, for excluded data points. Uh, we can show that the empirical distribution of D1 out estimator can be written like this. Uh, again, this is a superposition of the uh, two Gaussian randomnesses. The mean value, but mean value is depend, uh, mean value depends on the, the input cross, uh, but the fluctuation can be only Gaussian. The first one is comes from, again, data, and the other one is against the resampling. Uh, so the average estimator uh, should be should behave like this. In, if we take a very large number of uh, disampled data sets, the red color term would vanish, so variance would be reduced. And the sampling case is corresponds to the k equals to v1. Uh, this is a simple cross check of the theoretical prediction. Uh, this is uh, the empirical distribution of the even out logit is compared with the theoretical prediction. Uh, theoretical prediction is just a Gaussian, <laughs> and uh, it seems that uh, the two distributions seems to be very, uh, very in good agreement. Uh, okay. This agreement can be even uh, very apparent in if we use uh, the quantile quantile part. Here, the size of the input dimension is about 8K, and uh, the ratio of the minority and majority class is about quarter. So here, this is a very biased, uh, imbalanced case. But the prediction is very accurate. And here, and here is a com performance comparison. Uh, let's see first uh, the fixed regularization case. Uh, the left panel shows the uh, F2 score, which is the harmonic mean of the accuracy for both uh, minority class and majority class. As you can see, uh, weighted cross entropy method, uh, weighting method, performs very bad when the, in high dimensional settings. But the sampling approach, uh, this is a uh, time sampling case, and this is a uh, under bugging case. Uh, these two guys uh, perform very well, even in high dimensions. Uh, this singularity comes from the observation shown from linear separable region to the linear, linearly unseparable region. Uh, okay. Because the bias term of the weighted uh, method <laughs> is very strongly affected by this phase transition, uh, it cannot perform well in the high dimension setting. And also we can see that under bugging, bugging can uh, make a significant improvement against the downsampling. And what happens in, if we optimize the regularization parameter lambda? Uh, in this case, if, even the, for the optimal regularization parameter, the bias term for the weighting method is not so good. Uh, it still has bias towards the minority class. But on the other hand, uh, cross entropy, again, the cross entropy method and, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> downsampling and underbugging method is very better than the weighting method. And uh, the underbugging method is still better than the downsampling. Uh, this may come out of surprise uh, because in the previous cases, uh, the generalization error is uh, same with the uh, optimal change register meter. But in this case, because the total amount of data used in the training is much larger than the uh, larger than the downsampling case, so we can obtain uh, some performance gain. And, and we can also see that underbugging is very, seems to be very sens insensitive to the choice of the regularization parameter. So it seems that in the high dimension case, uh, which would be relevant to the running of neural networks, uh, sampling method is very nice uh, performed well. And this is a short summary for the um, uh, classification, running classifier from uh, imbalanced data. Uh, and the bugging is, as already said, it's very better than the downsampling and the regularization. Uh, this is because the total amount of data points used in the training is different. Uh, this is the characteristics of the imbalanced data. And the underbugging is very insensitive to the choice of the regularization parameter and uh, the existence of the phase transition. And the cost-sensitive method uh, is much 
performance must, must uh, worse than the resampling method. So you need to, uh, special care is, uh, for such cases. But training a sp special cost function is a bit difficult. So I think the resampling method is very useful. Uh, resampling method is the best recommended way. <laughs> Okay, this is a summary of this talk. Uh, the motivation was the uh, uh, is that we uh, want to know the difference between the L2 or L1 degradation and the assembling, and uh, the interesting phenomena around the uh, assembling method. And we can introduce a duplicate method for ensemble learning, and uh, this analysis can be easily uh, made by using the one recipe like analysis. And we treated two applications, and in, in the simple cases, uh, the generalization error cannot be uh, improved, but there is a one phase transition uh, which may be interesting. And the other case, uh, which is more structured case, uh, under bug bugging method is m much better than the regularization uh, method. So possibly uh, these two ap applications are very simple. <laughs> But possibly ensemble learning in a more structured data may provide a very fruitful phenomenon. So uh, I think it's nice to further uh, proceed this kind of direction. Okay. okay, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Takahashi. Is there any question from the audience? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Takashi, thank you so much for the great talk. Uh, I have a minor clarification. So in the first part of your talk, when you were uh, kind of ensembling and, and sort of adding these C mu variables to your cost function, right? In that case, uh, your estimator, the one you analyzed, y hat, was still taking an expectation over uh, the C variables, right? Mm -hmm. So could yes. you say a bit more about that? I thought that in this case, you would just analyze the predictor, which is X transpose W hat C, without averaging over C. So could you say a bit more why you average over C? Uh, uh, why average over C? <laughs> Yeah, because it seems that in the cost function, you get this additional randomness because the randomness from C is not averaged out, right? Uh -huh. So if that's the case, then I thought even for your predictor, you should just analyze X transpose W hat with the C being a quench uh, disorder. In okay, the system, similar right? to the just down sampling case. Uh, uh, so so you mean that you, uh, why I do not analyze a fixed random variable C? Exactly. Uh, uh, because... Uh, this estimator, uh, <laughs> the estimator for this randomized cost function has additional randomness, so the variance should be much larger than the original problem, I guess so. So, so, the, so I think such uh, estimator is not so useful for predictions, <laughs> because, because just, just it has a very large, large <laughs> fluctuation. Uh, of course, we can, uh, uh, Characterize its variance, but but I I I just think it's not so useful. <laughs> uh, if you have some applications, uh, please. <laughs> but it can be done if one. Uh, wants. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course, it's okay. it's very easy. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for good presentation. I, I'm just wondering uh, why we were comparing the underbagging and uh, downsampling. Now, looking at the fact that, you know, there will be more data uh, used in underbagging mm -hmm. than uh, downsampling. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do, I do, I'm just wondering, um, will we be justified saying that uh, from, from this uh, scenario that uh, underbagging is performing better than downsampling? Looking at that, you have more data training for underbagging than uh, the downsampling. Uh, so, 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 so you mean that uh, you need a clarification of the uh, yes. more that yes. in Why? The yeah. uh -huh. uh, Because uh, in the underbagging case, uh, downsampling case, only mm -hmm. one realization of C is used, right? So, so in this uh, realization, there are many zeros 
in so so in such data point, uh, so, uh, the data point with uh, C new that call uh, with uh, C new call, call is zero. This, this, such data point is not used, so it's not uh, never used in the training. So, but if we consider many realization of C, uh, the, uh, the all of the data point, point may appear in the training. So the, then the used data point is. I have one question. Um, in the first, uh, if you go back a few slides uh, back, where you just show the, the simplest uh, bootstrap technique, I think you call that bootstrap, where you just sample the data set. You have this C muse that you are, uh, you have these Poisson variables. You are, you are sampling each time a, uh, you get a different estimator for a different data set and you're averaging over these estimators, right? Yeah, yeah. It makes me think uh, about the kind of Bayesian estimator. You are averaging over a population of estimators. My question is, uh, is there a kind of um, equivalent Bayesian estimator which would take all the data into account but you have an effective temperature instead of solving the minimization problem for different some sample data sets and averaging over them. Mm -hmm. You take all the data into account, you do a Monte Carlo, you, you, you get a finite temperature estimator, but from the whole data right away, is there an equivalence between the two or is it really different? Uh, that's a very interesting. Uh, uh, actually, there is a similar argument made in the last century by the Ephron, which is the creator of the Pluto sub method. But uh, the exact relation has not been obtained. And, and uh, maybe we can obtain a relation. We can relate the uh, Bayesian estimator and the Pluto sub, Pluto sub one. But uh, still, I haven't tried it. But, but yeah, 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 it's very similar. And, I think it was tackling. So if we, I find something interesting, then I tell you. Okay, but so it's an open question. We're, we we don't know if there is really a yeah yeah a currently connection. no. Okay, thanks. Hi, uh, thanks for the very interesting talk. I, I was just wondering if you can clarify maybe a little bit why you expect uh, this one RSB structure to be exact. And, so, and, and maybe uh, the more specific question is, uh, you know, if 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 this is equivalent to some, you know, if averaging over the C is indeed equivalent to some uh, more explicit procedure, then I guess what you're claiming is that that procedure, the 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 replica symmetric prediction, should be exact in that. And I was just wondering if you can clarify. Or uh, uh, so, 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 yeah. uh, uh, I, sorry, I couldn't get the point. <laughs> Do you mean the exactness? Uh, I, I just wanted to get your insights on why why you believe that uh, this this uh, one RSB kind of analysis should be. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is just a bit, uh, this uh, these two slides are just explaining the the, the uh, intuitive uh, picture, but by we can actually. Compute, exactly computes the uh, partial function of the, this random uh, nested deprecated system. And then uh, exactly the same structure appears. So, so I just use it in the exact computation. Um, so you, maybe you expect replica symmetry because the problem is, is convex or? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for, because for each, uh, the sample data set, the problem is, is almost convex, so, so I think uh, the problem should be exact in, in the RS form. Okay, thank you. Um, in your talk, um, I'm, I'm a little bit confused when you were talking about uh, bagging because I have used bagging. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, do you look at um, comparing uh, the uh, the assemble itself with its base learners? Because um, I don't know if you look at that area as well. Like when you have the assemble, mm -hmm. you have it base learner. For example, if you have example, let's say for example, you choose like three, five, seven, and nine, for example. Mm -hmm. That is the assemble. And for each example, it has its own base learners. And these base learners are the weak learners. 
So we have to like compare the assembly itself and its baseline. I don't know if you look at that area in the classical traditional machine learning. Uh, because what I can see from your presentation is logistic regression and, uh, and other service um, um, machine learning algorithm. Uh. Okay, there, there no no so deep reason. <laughs> I it just yeah, I I choose the bugging yeah, just just as a start point. <laughs> because the reason why I'm saying this is because from your presentation you said um, it shows that bugging is uh, under bugging is uh, is performing better. This under bugging you were talking about is it different from the normal bugging um, techniques in assembly learning? Uh. You know, kind of. Okay. Uh, Sorry, I, I, I have no, no, no short answers, <laughs> so we'll discuss, discuss later. <laughs> okay, maybe I will talk to you later. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. All right, is there a last question? All right, if not, let's, let's thank uh, Takashi again. Thanks.